Good morning, class. Today we're working on Reader's Notebook, Lesson 14, pages 199 and 200. On page 199, we're going to be working on commas and semicolons in a series again. And we're going to be working on introductory elements on page 200. Page 100, it says commas and semicolons are used to separate three or more items within a series or a list. A semicolon is used when the items in the series already contain a comma. Oftentimes, you guys, you're going to see that when you have cities and states listed, multiple cities and states within a sentence, because a city is always followed by a comma before the state. So if it said Helena, comma, Montana, Butte, comma, Montana, Missoula, comma, Montana, in between each of those, there would be a semicolon because there's already a comma following each of those cities. Um, items that are separated by commas, and here's an example. It says he was shocked by the dirt, comma, the smell, comma, and the noise on the ship. Items separated by semicolons, the documentary, the documentary aired on Channel 11 PBS, semicolon, Channel 35, comma, WGN, semicolon, and Channel 70, comma, HMN. And each of those, Channel 11, comma, PBS, is one channel. Okay, so channel 11, comma, PBS is one channel, and then it's followed by the semicolon. Channel 35, WGN, is a second channel, and it's followed by a semicolon because there's a comma after the 35. And channel 70 is also followed by a comma, HMN, and that's one channel. So you have three items in that series, and you have to separate those items with semicolons because there's already a comma that's followed by the channel number. It says uh, for our directions today, insert commas or semicolons to correctly punctuate each sentence. I am going to zoom in so that you can see a little bit better as I'm filling in the commas and semicolons for our examples. Okay, number one reads, when James signed up to be a sailor, comma, he had no idea of the discomfort, danger, and hard work involved. Well, we know the items in the series are discomfort, danger, and hard work. And we have to figure out what we're going to use to separate those. So we have to ask ourselves the thinking question here. Do these three items contain a, common, or a comma at all? Is there a comma in between any of these? No, none of them contain a comma already. So that means that we will be separating those three items with commas. So it's discomfort, comma, danger, comma, and hard work. If we go down and we're going to now look at number three, it says the four officers on the ship were from Malvern, Pennsylvania, Trenton, New Jersey, Lebanon, Pennsylvania, and Baltimore, Maryland. Well, Malvern, Pennsylvania is one place. It's a city within a state. Trenton, New Jersey is a city within a state. Lebanon, Pennsylvania is one city within a state. And Baltimore, Maryland is another city within a state. Now you ask yourselves the thinking question. Do the items in the series contain a comma? Do they contain a comma? Well, yeah, because they're a city, comma, state. Malvern, comma, Pennsylvania. Trenton, comma, New Jersey. Lebanon, comma, Pennsylvania. And Baltimore, comma, Maryland. That means when you separate them, you now need to use a semicolon. So it's Malvern, comma, Pennsylvania, semicolon. Trenton, New Jersey, semicolon. Lebanon, Pennsylvania, semicolon, and Baltimore, Maryland. And that's how you identify whether or not you're going to need a semicolon or a comma. If there's already commas in between the items, such as cities and states, you need to then use a semicolon. If you look down at number eight, number eight is kind of hard sometimes, and I think it's just the way that it's written. It says, to find out more about this battle, we looked for these three books at the library. It's going to help you identify the titles. War Heroes Then and Now is one title. Sailors, Soldiers, Heroes is one title, and How They Fought, How They Won is one title. And you have to decide or determine whether you're going to use semicolons or commas in that sentence to separate the items in a series. All right, you can go ahead and pause it here, finish four through eight on your own, and when you're ready to resume, you can click play. Today on page 200, we're going to be working on introductory elements, and those are a group of words 
that, or even just a word, that introduce a sentence, okay? Introductory elements are words, phrases, or clauses that appear at the beginning of a sentence. They add information, but they are not part of the main sentence. To show they are introductory elements, they are offset by commas. So introductory word for, we have an example here, it says, truly, comma, I believe it is important to know about James Fortin and other patriots. Well, you can see that I believe it is important to know about James Fortin and other patriots is a complete sentence on its own. But truly, okay, is an introductory element and it's followed by a comma. In our activity today, it says underline each introductory word or phrase, then correctly punctuate the sentence. So you're going to have to figure out what punctuation is missing from the sentence. Let's look at number one, and I'm going to go ahead again and zoom in so that we can see things a little bit better. In our directions say, underline each introductory word or phrase, then correctly punctuate the sentence. Sentence number one reads, like James Fortin, many successful African Americans worked to abolish slavery. And so underline each introductory word or phrase. Well, you can see that we have like James Fortin. Many successful African Americans worked to abolish slavery. Well, many successful African Americans worked to abolish slavery is a sentence on its own. And so, like James Fortin is our introductory phrase in that sentence. Like James Fortin, comma, many successful African Americans worked to abolish slavery. Let's go ahead and practice another one together. Number two, for example, Frederick Douglass, who lived in the 1800s, became a famous abolitionist. Well, when we look at this sentence, we can see that we have Frederick Douglass, who lived in the 1800s, became a famous abolitionist. And that's a complete sentence all on its own. And so our introductory element, our introductory phrase here is for example. And we need to follow that with a comma. For example, comma, Frederick Douglass, who lived in the 1800s, became a famous abolitionist. Now, you can see that you are going to go ahead and work through number eight on your own. When you have completed that, if you would make sure that you take a picture of your work, upload it to Teams, attach it to your assignment, and turn it in. Thank you, you guys.